Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is BAPCH IGNU. This channel is dedicated to IGNU BA Psychology Honors. If you are watching us for the first time, welcome again and thank you for watching. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't lose us to the never ending feed on YouTube. As we know, this series is about BPCC 102, that is Biopsychology. So, this video is the continuation of the third unit Central Nervous System. In this video, we will look into the midbrain, hindbrain, lobes of the brain along with the disorders related to the central nervous system. Now let's start with the midbrain. The midbrain, also called the mesencephalon, is the middle part of the brain. It has two parts, tectum and tegmentum. The midbrain helps transmit messages between itself and the cerebrum. So let's look into the tectum first. This is the top part of the midbrain. It has two parts, the inferior colliculus, which deals with hearing, and the superior colliculus, which is involved in coordinating vision and movement. The second part is tegmentum. It is found in the middle of the brain and it contains parts of reticular formation. It has two important areas, the red nucleus, which helps with movement, and the substantia nigra, which produces dopamine, to prevent Parkinson's disease. The reticular formation in this area helps with things like staying awake, paying attention and controlling muscles. So think of the midbrain as the brain's middle manager, helping to relay messages and coordinate important tasks like hearing, seeing, moving and staying alert. Now let's look into the hindbrain. The hindbrain is the back part of the brain which has two main parts metencephalon and myelencephalon. The metencephalon consists of cerebellum and pons, while myelencephalon contains medulla oblongata. Let's look into the cerebellum first. So this is like the brain's little brain and sits at the base of a skull right behind the pons. Inside it looks like a leaf veins. The cerebellum helps control how your muscles move, making your actions smooth and coordinated. It also keeps you steady and maintains learned habits and skills. If this gets hurt or damaged, you might have trouble moving smoothly, your balance could be off and you might even experience issues like tremors or unstable walking. The second part is pawns. The word pawns means bridge, literally, and that's what it does. It's like a bridge connecting the cerebellum and the upper brain parts. The pawns help control reflexes in your body, regulates breathing and plays a role in your sleep, dream and waking up. The third is medulla oblongata. This part is at the top of a smile cord and is the brain's lower section. It has various important functions. Some parts in the medulla oblongata are like control centers for vital things like your heart rate, blood pressure and breathing. It also handles non-vital reflexes like uh, vomiting, coughing and sneezing. Plus, it's where the nerves from your body cross over. So, sensory info from your left side goes to the right side of your brain and vice versa. So, the hindbrain is like your brain's basement, taking care of important functions like movement, breathing and reflexes and making sure everything runs smoothly. Now, let's look into the lobes of the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is like the brain's outer layer, made up of tightly packed neurons. It starts off smooth before birth, but as the brain grows and becomes more complex, it gets wrinkled. The process is called corticalization. This cortex is divided into two parts called cerebral hemispheres, and they are connected by a thick band of neural fibers known as the corpus callosum. This band helps the left and right hemisphere talk to each other. If it's damaged, communication between the hemispheres break down, causing behavior changes, which we can normally see in split brain patients. Now these wrinkles on the cortex creates fissures and divide it into five lobes. They are frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and the hidden insula. Now let's look at the frontal lobe. These lobes are at the front of your brain. The very front part is called the prefrontal cortex, which handles sensory info and links it with other brain areas. Frontal lobes are in charge of your body's movement, both big and small, like wiggling a finger. 
The precentral gyrus in this lobe controls motor function. The frontal lobes also deal with higher level stuff like complex thinking, decision making and emotions thanks to the connection to the limbic system. Plus in most cases the left frontal lobe helps with languages specifically Broca's area. Do you remember Broca's area? The one we discussed in our first video. If something happens to Broca's area, it can lead to speech and fluency problem, known as Broca's aphasia. The second is temporal lobe. It's like the brain sidekick, found on the sides of your head near your temples. It is separated from the other lobes by a groove called lateral sulcus. Inside there is a part called transverse gyrus that's all about hearing and language processing. The temporal lobe also handles seeing, understanding movement, recognizing faces and dealing with emotions. If something goes wrong in this lobe, it might lead to hallucination both in hearing and seeing. Okay. In the left temporal lobe, there is a vernix area which helps you understand speech. If it's damaged, a person might speak fluently but what they say won't make sense and they won't understand all this. Now let's look into the parietal lobes. They are like the brain's touch center, found at the top and back of each hemisphere. They are in charge of sensing touch and getting info from muscle stretch receptors. This touch info helps us make sense of what we see and hear. The other is occipital lobes. These are at the back and base of your brain and handle everything you see. They are your visual processors. Damage here can cause vision problem like seeing flashes of lights, hallucinations or not recognizing visual things. Now the final one is the insula. The insula is a hidden lobe under the temporal one. It's vital for vision and damage can lead to blindness. Extensive damage especially on the right side might cause blindness in the left visual field. People with cortical blindness can't perceive patterns or images. The insula also plays roles in consciousness, emotions and keeping your body's balance. It helps you be aware of yourself, feel compassion and understand others' feeling. So it's a bit like your brain's emotional and sensory hub. Now let's look into the brain processes related to consciousness. Okay, so our brain has a teamwork system that helps us stay aware of ourselves and what's happening around. One key player is the reticular activating system or RAS for short. It's like a network of brain cells that deals with sensations and paying attention. It takes info from our spinal cord and sends it to the brain's thinking part, the cortex. Think of RAS as the alert system that keeps us conscious and awake. So our brain has three main states, awake, asleep and dreaming. And the RAS located in the part of the brain called mesopons helps these states. You know, they happen in a certain order based on how our brain cells work together and, they, and the input they get from our senses. Now there is something called the pineal body which is small part near the middle of the brain. It's like our body's clock manager. It helps us follow our daily rhythms like when it's light and dark outside. For birds, reptiles, fish and amphibians, this is super important. The pineal body also makes a hormone called melatonin, which helps our body function synchronize up and keep our sleep patterns in check, like making us sleepy at night. So think of the brain as a steam, okay, with the RAS at the alert system and the pineal body as a clock manager. And they all work together to keep us aware and on a schedule. Now let's look at the disorders of the central nervous system. We'll first discuss the Alzheimer's disease. So this is when the brain cells start to break down, leading to memory problems, troubles with attention and difficulty with movement. It's a type of dementia and often genetic. People with Alzheimer's may forget names, faces and struggle with basic daily tasks. Second is Parkinson's disease. This one affects how a person moves and it's more common in older folks. A common sign is shaking when not moving. It can also cause problems with thinking. Third is stroke. Sometimes an injury or a disease can harm parts of the brain that control movement. Strokes can happen because of bleeding or lack of blood supply to the brain. This can lead to paralysis, memory problem and even trouble speaking. Fourth 
is multiple sclerosis. MS is a disease where the body's immune system attacks the protective coating around the nerve fibers in the brain and spinal cord. It often starts when people are young and can cause vision issues, muscle weakness and problems with coordination. The fifth is cerebral palsy. This happens in childhood when something damages the brain like an infection or lack of oxygen during birth. It can make it hard to control muscles and can affect one side of the body. Sixth is seizure disorder. This makes the brain suddenly act differently like causing someone to lose consciousness, shake, or have muscle spasms. Epilepsy is one type, but it can be managed with medications. The seventh is amnesia. This is when you lose a big chunk of your memory, but your other brain functions still work. It can happen due to infections, injuries, or diseases like Alzheimer's. There are two types. One where you can't remember things after the damage, anterograde, and one where you forget stuff just before the damage, retrograde. These disorders affect how our brain works, and they can have various causes and symptoms. It's essential to understand them to provide proper care and support to those who may be dealing with these conditions. So that's the end of this video. Let's recap quickly the topics we covered today. There are midbrain, hindbrain, lobes, and the disorders. Yes. So the next video will be on the fourth unit. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you have any doubts and feedback, please drop them on the comment box below or DM us in any given social media account. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content. Follow us on Instagram for quick notes and updates and join the discussion on Telegram for all your questions. Links are down below in description. See you in next video. Until then, stay curious, stay engaged and remember, you got this.